A year ago, journalists from Chinese state media arrive in Wuhan to cover a story about a mysterious new virus. It's three days before the city goes into lockdown. The few confirmed cases of the disease are at a seafood market. We have concealed the journalists' identities for their own safety. They soon realize the outbreak is much more serious than they thought. A reporter who we've called Yang continues to film secretly after being detained by the police. Yang is forced to show images on his camera to public security officers. While doing so, he continues to film on his phone. While China's response to the virus was later praised, the lack of openness at the beginning of the outbreak has been blamed for contributing to a failure to contain the disease. Yang is blocked from entering hospitals. In order to enter, Yang pretends to have a fever. He finds packed wards with patients waiting to get tested. This was just one week after the disease had been given a name, COVID-19. A woman brought her 78-year-old grandfather to the gates of the hospital. He'd already been turned away from one that had no more beds. Guards wouldn't let him in. Officers stop Yang filming even at the hospital gates. The lockdown is announced at 2 a.m. on January 23rd. Yang is told to return to Beijing before it comes into force the next morning. The roads to the airport and railway station are packed with taxis. Yang joins 300,000 people who left Wuhan that night. The decision to provide an eight-hour window before the city is sealed off allows many infected patients to flee Wuhan for the outside world. Phil Rees, Al Jazeera. Okay, let's stay with that exclusive report. Joining us here on the news hour, Nicholas Thomas. He's an associate professor of political science and international relations at City University in Hong Kong. He's also an expert in health security in Asia. Nicholas Thomas, welcome to the news hour. The outgoing U.S. Secretary yeah. of State, Mike Pompeo, wants a deeper dive into the reality of how and when uh, what happened in Wuhan actually began. Are there more profound questions to be asked than we are likely to get from the WHO inquiry? I think that the true uh, nature of the outbreak, um, where it originated, how it sort of came about, will never really probably be known at this stage because we're looking at this a year later, uh, as you mentioned. Um, there are certainly some questions to be asked as to that initial cluster, not the ones that were shown on screen, but earlier than that, in December, where the first case we've got recorded didn't have any connection with the wet market. And indeed, if you look at the December outbreak, there's about half, roughly half of all cases have no connection with that wet market. So finding out how and why this virus was able to jump the species barrier and when it did so is going to be a critical question the WHO is going to be pursuing. OK, briefly, when you talk about that key wet market, they're investigating or Quite they want not. to get some answers to do with what the Chinese traders in that market were doing with livestock. So that's the, the sort of first port of call of the World Health Organization there. But a year on, realistically, what's the point? Well, the question will then be, what is the data which the Chinese authorities are currently holding from the earlier uh, period? Some of that has already been shared, but we don't know if all of it has been. So this will be one area uh, for them to look at. Realistically, uh, this is a mission which should have been undertaken um, a good six months ago, if not earlier. Uh, there was the mission back in July, uh, but unfortunately, the WHO um, team wasn't allowed to go uh, to Wuhan. Um, that would have been a very good opportunity to share the early data. 
uh, but it wasn't taken up. OK. Now, data relating to the laboratory that Mike Pompeo is talking about, hmm. that has been deleted. That's a fact. That is sparking fresh accusations of a cover-up that have been circulating just in the mm. past few days in both the Australian and the British media, yeah? Yeah, I mean, the Wuhan Institute for Virology has been on the front line um, of a lot of the conspiracy theories uh, that the Americans have, particularly under the Trump administration, have been putting out. In reaction, China has been closing itself off. Now, I do think that had a, a more collaborative approach been undertaken, which was there were mechanisms for this sort of cooperation under the previous US administration, then there would have been a more open dialogue. The fact that it's been caught up and so heavily politicised will inevitably distort um, our understandings of the early um, origins of the virus. Um, but it's very, I think it's important not to get caught up in the what ifs and maybes, but just to be led by science. Because if there's one lesson that this outbreak has really taught us, it's that when politics gets involved instead of science is when mistakes start getting made and when we start seeing clusters and infections emerge and arise. But at the moment, can we get to the science of the origins of the outbreak? I mean, clearly China does not want to look in its own rearview mirror with this. So I think it's safe to say, isn't it, there is a, a difference between the official version from Beijing and what might possibly, and I stress the word possibly, might have happened round about the end of not last year, but the year before, kind of October, November, December time? Um, I think it's very clear to say, I think it's very fair to say that there is a gap um, between what we know from the data to date and what is being circulated um, by different officials in different capitals. I think it's narrowing that gap, narrowing that gap, which is the key um, indicator of success, not just for the WHO, team in country, but also for China to show that it is actually committed to an open process in this regard. OK, always great to get your opinion on this ongoing global event, I guess we can call it now. Nicholas Thomas there in Hong Kong. Thanks. Thank you very Going much. for a while. Thank, Thank you. you.